Hey everybody, uh, we'll be kicking off here in just a couple minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and throw out apologies in advance. I am in Denver and I've been talking to a lot of people about DFK and now my voice is a little bit off. So apologies in advance for sounding slightly like the Grim Reaper, but we're, uh, we're going to have a couple more people join the stage and then we'll get things rolling. All right, so let's go ahead and get started again for anybody who didn't hear me. Sorry about my voice, but we'll be all right. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and launch and kick off. Today's AMA is about game mechanics and the mechanics department. We're going to start off with a little bit of a state of the project from Frisky Fox. Brief interlude, technical difficulties. It's that hotel internet, I swear. It always gets you. <laughs> always. Why don't we go ahead and have uh, Dreamer give us some... Info is going to be a two-part state of the project anyway, so we'll switch it up while we wait for Fox to get back. Yeah, makes sense. I just got two quick updates um, on the growth side. So to recap, um, you know, in my role, uh, marketing, creative, everything under our impact initiative as it relates to like charity, grant, and other efforts along with um, community and events. That's kind of the stuff that I'll be uh, reporting on. So for this, you know, happy to report our uh, proposed policy that was voted on the community has decided uh in 99.8 percent support um for the proposed gardens policy so that's in our efforts to continue to re you know refine um not only our approach be more transparent but include the community so excited to see the support there um there are a few parts of the policy that i think there will there will need to be follow-up items on so uh, for those that we're able to participate and read through and, and voice their their view, uh, really trying to make sure that our, our decks that functions as an on and off ramp for the overall DeFi Kingdoms experience is stable. It's, it's promoting um, liquid, healthy tokens and pairs. So everybody involved in participating, um, providing liquidity and earning rewards there um, are doing it in more of a, you know, a, a safe um safe space of blue, blue chip tokens there. So there will be some pairs that are live today that no longer qualify under the new policy. So I think we're looking to do an announcement there on a couple follow on votes to see um, if the community feels any of those pairs uh, should be either grandfathered in or under new policy be retired. So that's the update there. The only other update um, I'll say before, you know, pausing and handing it back over, as we see we have Fox back, is just related to DeFi Kingdoms Day. Um, we've announced that for those that are at ETH Denver, um, we are working with Harmony. We're meeting together pretty much all day, starting with breakfast at nine. Um, we're gonna have some events uh, throughout the day, including you know words from Frisky himself, um, maybe some alpha dropped. Uh, we'll do some brainstorming sessions, um, a panel with devs, and then more of like a traditional hackathon style planning session where folks in the team will be walking around, really trying to feed into the grant program to incentivize people to think about ways to build on top of DeFi Kingdoms using the NFTs, using the tokens, and really partnering together to do that. So those are the two updates on the growth side. I will pause there as we have Frisky back. Hopefully I'm back. I don't know if I'll have issues again. Sort of want to echo some of those awesome things that were said by Dreamer. Uh, DFK Day, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be there. Uh, I'll be wearing some big old glasses and a uh, mask, so still trying to be anonymous as much as possible, but really looking forward to uh, you know seeing some of our devs out there in the community and offering uh, you know like technical advice and figuring out ways we can partner um, there's really a lot of really cool opportunities out there in the blockchain world, like with the uh, metaverse stuff, where we can have like our NFTs be used in uh, in like other people's games and like spend stamina, earn XP, uh, earn items and stuff like that. So there's a lot of really cool things, and I'm gonna be probably uh, hacking up some things myself as well, seeing if I can get some cool new features added. Uh, so it'll, it'll just like really be a blast. Um, but that's, that's basically it. Uh, there's a lot of us are involved with that. Uh, we're going to be pretty busy this week, especially. Um, so, you know, looking forward, if you see me there, come up, shake my hand. Uh, I'm okay with hugs. So, you know, just whatever you guys want to do, we'll take pictures. Uh, thank you guys. Merch, merch, merch. We have, we have stickers, we have shirts, we have other things to be given away. So. Come for yes. the ideas, share your ideas, network, high five, but also some uh, unique merch that we are 
providing no charge. Super excited for the merch as always. And uh, I do want to go ahead and plug real quick that um, <clears throat> while we have many things happening during DFK day from 2 p.m. to 5, 5 30, 6 p.m., uh, we also are going to have kind of a set aside dedicated area just for a community meet and greet. Come hang out with us. You don't have to be a programmer, you don't have to be hacking. You can just come and meet us and, and hang out, get some merch. We want you to to come. Please come see us. Uh, it's really cool to get to meet community members. I actually got to meet Badrick last night. Uh, and, I mean, that's just really, really cool for me to be able to put faces to names and get to meet some of you that I spend a lot of time talking to anyway. I did forget my usual reminders, so real quick, I'm going to throw them in here. We are going to try to keep this AMA pretty short because most of us are in Denver and we have events that we need to get to. So we're going to keep it pretty short. We are going to try to answer a couple live questions, uh, but we probably aren't going to go an hour like we have been lately. They're meant to be closer to 30 minutes anyway. Um, aside from that, raise your hand if you have a question that you want to ask. At the end, we'll pull up people who have their hands up. Uh, if your question answered, please unraise your hand so that we can get to as many people as we can today. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Bert. Hey guys, let's see. So there's there's a lot of different things that we're working on right now, and I think you know we we haven't been announcing a lot of them recently, just because uh, you know if we announce too early, then people will just start asking you know when when's it coming, and sometimes it does take a little bit longer for something to come out, just for one reason or another. So we've been a little bit keeping things a little bit close to our chest, but I do have a few things that I wanted to um, mention that we're working on and kind of just get you guys um, excited. And I know we have kind of at least like briefly in passing mentioned some of these things, but um, uh, the one first thing is the perilous journey. Um, that is something where we're going to talk about a lot more in detail um, tomorrow at, at the event. Um, but just to give you an overview of what that is, um, you know, now there there was that that promotional video that kind of it kind of showed what happened. Um, someone from Crystal Vale has arrived in Sarendale, and uh, now the people of Sarendale are aware of this other land, um, but they don't know how to get there. Um, so this perilous journey is is kind of a, um, a call to heroes to help chart the course to Crystal Vale, um, and it is not a very safe course. So um this will be an event that will involve hero burning um and it will have a lot of unique rewards that i think you guys will be excited for um but uh beyond that i don't really want to say too much more and, and save it for tomorrow um so please uh if you ask any questions about this we're not going to answer them so uh, I'd suggest you try asking a different question. Um, but just just so that's that's coming uh, very soon. And the land tournaments are are in work. Um, I can't give you a deadline on when that's coming, but um, as far as the way the land tournaments are, basically it, it's going to be ba our first foray into PvP. Um, it, it won't be combat, but it will be player versus player in a simplified uh, tournament style where it's going to be stat-based and uh it's uh, kind of a best of seven match and it, it gives us a chance to start prototyping a lot of the things that we're needing to do for the combat system um we need to be able to uh display what happened in a in like a contract interaction in like a sequential approach um and so this is our kind of uh, it gives us a chance to do that and also give something fun for the players to do um and compete for land ownership um and uh, we'll have more details about that later and um, you can ask questions about that if you'd like uh and um, other than that i think i'll leave the last thing for penguin because uh he's been working on that a lot lately so yep i'm going to tag one thing in real quick uh just to build on what hubert said so perilous journey we're not going to answer any questions today we're going to have a bigger more detailed announcement about it tomorrow um at dfk day we are more than likely not going to live stream just because of doxing. We don't want to put some of our team members that aren't prepared as well as community members, the hackers. It's just a, a big thing to be able to live stream it and have doxing as a concern. So we probably are not going to live stream it. However, we are going to record it. So it will be recorded. The audio will be available for everyone to listen to. After the audio becomes available, I'm going to post a specific 
Q&A sheet for um, Perilous Journey. And then we're going to put a special AMA on the books with Hubert for Perilous Journey specifically. So yes, the information is going to come to all of you. We are not going to leave anybody in the dark. And then we are going to have an entire conversation around Perilous Journey alone. So don't worry, the information is coming. This is, this is just the teaser. Um, aside from that, Penguin, go ahead. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Please come to DFK Day. Uh, I'll, I'll be there. I'd love to see you guys and meet a lot of you. I love our community like a lot. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, so I guess as far as things that are in the pipeline, Hubert mentioned the Perilous Journey. He mentioned the land tournaments. Uh, he alluded to the combat system, which is also in the pipeline currently. Uh, one other thing that's in the pipeline, and I, I think I've mentioned this briefly before, is travel. Um, so we have this big, beautiful map that the art department worked on, um, and they, they put out the first expansion to you guys pretty recently. Um, and one thing we'd like to have along with that map is the ability to have your heroes move around it and do quests that are specific to certain regions or fight enemies that are in certain areas. Um, so along with that, we need like a, uh, like a, a good travel system that's also uh, blockchain compatible. So that's something that's currently in the pipeline. There might be some mock-ups that get posted in the AMA voice chat that we're using to like prototype with. Uh, but overall, uh, that's that's one of one other thing that's in the pipeline that we're really excited about. Um, a lot of the the ideas and technology there are pretty novel, so we're excited to get that out to you guys. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to go ahead and drop that teaser right now in the AMA voiceless chat. I do want to reinforce: this is a early prototype, just a rough draft of hey, here's something that it could look like. Do not take this as finalized information. Yeah, this is this is not what it will finally look like, but we are we are working towards uh, displaying to you guys like what the travel system will look like, and so we're kind of prototyping with things like this. And that is out now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hop into some questions here. Uh, the first one is actually about land anyway. Uh, it's been mentioned in the previous AMAs that there will be competition for land. Will this competition happen for all of the available plots at once or be staggered? For example, is there going to be one huge tournament to claim available land or 50 concurrent tournaments for each plot or something else? Keep in mind, too, there's actually going to be 949 plots total. Uh, Hubert, did you want to talk about that? And then we also have a teaser for that. Sure, yeah. Um, and actually, a 904 or let's see, yeah, 949 plots in Serendale, but then we also are going to have plots in, in the in Crystal Vale and other expansions too. So, um, But uh, yeah, so the plan is that uh, each land will have its own tournament, and we will uh, try to stagger the start times of those tournaments out so that we're not favoring any specific time zone. Um, but that's kind of the idea that we have there. So it, yeah, it, but there will be like concurrent tournaments that happen so you wouldn't be able to send the same heroes to the same to all of the tournaments uh because of that and also we're hoping to rope in our travel system as well and have it be where you actually have to travel to the land location to be able to uh, participate in that tournament with your heroes i'm going to drop that teaser now same disclaimers rough draft no guarantee this is exactly what it looks like All right, so that teaser is out now as well, still in the AMA voiceless chat. The next question is actually still about land, but more on the utility side. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, it would be cool to see a mechanism where those with land can produce output, but require many hands to do the work, and therefore hire substantial heroes to do the work. The landowners benefit, the people who assist benefit. Uh, are there thoughts on this? I do want to real quick, sorry, backtrack. Mean Machine was the one that asked the first question, and this question came to us from Elias. Uh, Nonlinear, did you want to talk on this one a little bit? Right, right. This is a, a very good question, Elias. Uh, and it's actually kind of uh, on the nose-ish with a lot of things. So 
we do want lands to provide a lot of utility to the landowners, but we also do want to have social aspects surrounding them so that there's utility for a larger set of the player base as well. Um, so we have discussed and we are looking towards like resource management systems, um, having heroes contribute to gathering resources, kind of guild systems as well. These are all things that are kind of in the works for the different types of utility that lands will have. Very nice. I know we're still working on a lot of fun things for lands and very exciting things to make it rewarding to people. Our next question comes from Rin Immortal. And it is in regards to a crafting stat feature and the probability of having one. Uh, Hubert, did you want to talk on that? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, unfortunately, Dagmar couldn't make it today, but he's actually been um, heading up uh, working on a crafting system for us. And um, we do have basically that in mind, where we want to have uh, we want to have crafting, and we want it to be hero based with a skill system in place. So um, you know, you will to be able to make the best things, you're going to need to put in the the time and and energy to you know, increase your hero's skill and then be get to that point where it can create the best um, equipment or, or whatever it is you're crafting. Um, so we do have that. Uh, and it's, you know, it's still, there's a lot of work to go into that. Um, I mean, crafting systems are very complex and there's a lot of balancing work that needs to go into it. Uh, but we're trying to build it up so that, you know, we can release an, an early uh you know like first levels like one through 20 worth of resources needed for crafting and then we can you know iterate over time um just so we can get it out sooner uh, and that is also one of the reasons why the level 10 quests uh, the profession quests have been somewhat delayed is because we're trying to get at least a few resources that will be used specifically for a crafting system um added in as uh, some of the things that you can find by doing profession. Nice. The uh, last question that we have pre-scheduled is from Mute Silo, uh, a drop rate calculator for heroes specifically according to the levels and professions. Uh, we have the drop rates in general put out there in the docs, but a specific calculator so that we, you know, players can plug in their hero and a quest and see what their likelihood of rewards are uh not linear did you want to talk on that right so again this is a, a great suggestion and i really like the idea of showing players what they can expect to get from quests so uh, in particular i'd like this to be done in like the the game's ui itself with the last quest that came out the mining quest uh, we actually have like expected unlocked jewel rewards uh, listed for every hero when you go start the quest. And I think for something like gardening, that's something we could also tie into the UI to make it like pretty clear. This is what you should expect um, either on average, if it's like a probabilistic thing or what you can expect flat out if it's a more deterministic reward. As far as the other quests like fishing and foraging, we haven't released the uh, drop rate probabilities for all the items yet. Um, and if we do, again, I, I'd want that to be tied into the UI. But until then, uh, that's that's something that we're going to keep discussing as well. If I can just add on real quick to that. I, uh, we have released the, the base chances for fishing and foraging, but uh, right. we have not. Yeah, the, those chances grow as you increase in skill and uh, stats. So uh, that how much they grow, though, has not been released. Right, right. apologies. If I, uh, I wasn't clear about that, but yes. Uh, it's definitely nice to have it built straight into the UI when the time comes. It makes life a lot easier and keeps from having to pull up eight different screens at a time. So at this point, we are going to pull up a couple of people to ask questions. Like I mentioned, we're going to try to keep this one a little bit shorter. So we'll see how many questions we can get through. When I pull you up, I'm going to pull a couple of people up at a time. Please wait for me to call, to say your name before you ask and mute yourself in the meantime. Um, and then just for the sake of time, you know, try to keep it as quick as we can so we can ask, we can have more questions. So I have invited a couple of people up to speak. 
Trade for why? Go ahead. Hey, guys. So I'll try and keep this short, but it is a little bit long. It's two parts. So uh, first, I want to talk about the heroes, uh, the hero market. Uh, without you know a truly compelling reason, older heroes aren't selling for a premium. Um, you know, Pre-Hero 60K, you didn't have a Monte Carlo match bot for summons. Uh, the experience gained from the wishing well is quickly being caught up by the new quest. So the advantage for being early is being eaten away. Given that older heroes are you know, statistically, quote unquote, worse and have no advantage, that leads to my second part, which is um, with liquidity being expected to be supplied, you know, mainly on the lower side so we can keep the extra, um, you know, you need the bank for working capital. I, I can I understand that. Right. So there's no price discovery mechanism uh, to the upside without um, you know, bidding mechanism. Right. So in the rare event, you have a desirable card. You don't get a bidding. This brings prices just down in general. Um, and since non, excuse me, since Gen Zero hold um, are the only assets, the rest are really commodities, the, the tavern becomes a race to find liquidity. Can the devs talk about how they envisioned the market working when they dreamed up the game, how that vision's evolved given the growth, and how the current state of the market would be graded against those visions? That's my first part. The second, I think, ties in a little bit more on the mechanics. You know, we learn about new things all the time, advanced stats, recessive genes. Um, can we get, you know, just a, a big concept dump or idea dump from you guys on what you were thinking when you made these, what the genes are, the mutation rates? Um, this way, everybody's reading from the same book, right? It's hard to, you know, if you're looking through the tavern, if you have a specific, I want a recessive gene, it becomes hard. That makes the seller have to you know, lower their price when something could be worth more. It would just make the market flow a little quicker. Um, I also have two specific asks, one with the wishing well. Can that be reformulated um, for you know, older heroes, meaning something with a high level or high profession scores that can't be match botted or excuse me, um, whale botted or whale uh, stamp potted, sorry. To for land raffle tickets, Gen Zero, et cetera. I feel like the infrastructure is there and it would kind of help incentivize more purchasing of heroes. Um, and the second ask I have is the summons cost and odds seem to be carefully curated when the game was dreamed up. I think there's probably an Excel model floating around that conceptually placed what a theoretical range of value is on a hero. Could you guys share that model? Um, and if not, who on the team has access to it? So I think um, on on the view of like Gen Zero as being assets and all the other heroes being commodities, I think it if we think only of summoning, you could look at all the non Gen Zero heroes as being like consumable resources or commodities, but they all have their their primary or secondary, depending on kind of your focus within DeFi kingdoms, uh, utility of of questing, right? And then the questing will continue to evolve, and then combat and so many other bits of utility. So. I don't think um, all if just because you're a non Gen Zero that you're necessarily totally different in terms of like commodity versus asset. We have to think about long term that present value of a lot of these heroes um, as it reflects to functionality today and long term. Um, but I, I will say that there are a lot of good points on transparency of a marketplace, and marketplaces have different forms, and there could be some you know deep value um either assets or commodities however we want to talk about them um heroes that are listed that don't necessarily get highlighted and some that actually do their research just like in every you know semi-efficient or fully efficient markets um they kind of dive in and they see those that are over undervalued that it's not only like the sniped just the average based on all these inputs with the the prices. So I, I do think there are people that fundamentally benefit from that. I think having other options with bidding or a different, you know, bulletin board in the castle, these are all options going around. So a lot of good thoughts. I just wanted to share my view of don't fully see any non Gen Zero heroes not being an asset as they all do have ability to earn in perpetuity um, by way of either profession quest or upcoming um, features such, such as combat and other. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like you asked about how did it start out? What was the vision? Where is it at now? And how does that stack up? Heroes are always uh, seen as assets in our models. Uh, there's like the question of ROI. Um, how long does it take you to earn back how much you invested, basically? Any play to earn game um, will have that type of uh, like model. And yes, we do have spreadsheets. We have like uh, some 
simulations and charts and graphs and things like that. But um, it comes down to like how long does it take you to get your ROI? Gen zeros have a really strong ROI, but the reason why they do is because other heroes that they're producing also have a strong ROI. So that is a part of it there. Hopefully that helps to answer some of that. Got um, it. So um, that answer makes sense. I had a question how you're calculating ROI. Are you guys in, using IRR on the exit value or would you use an NPV? And it's still on the exit value. I think the same pressures exist without the ability to uh, price discover to the upside. You'd really have to use IRR based on your own participation, right? You can own, you can, you can buy a, in the real world, you, you can buy a gold mine and not mine it, right? Holding the asset isn't necessarily net present value. But if you, if you say I'm hiring X amount of workers that have Y yield over time and every month, these, this is my initial cost and these are my monthly offsetting inflow of, you know, um, either gold that then you have to liquidate. It's the same thing with, with heroes. And as we add uh, additional functionality, you know, how often you quest them, how efficient you are in questing them, if you're putting the quest on the, the right heroes on the right quests, um, what you're doing with what you earn, if you're selling them, if you're holding them. If you're, if you're trading it and so on. So in my mind, I think it would probably be an IRR, but there isn't a perfect science because we're in such a, a high growth environment with so many features coming out even in you know the next weeks and months that it's, it's a little bit of a moving target. No, I understand, Dreamer. So look, I wanted to ask a question that was a little on the harder side simply because I need to know you guys thought about it, right? And it's clear you did. So I appreciate the answer a lot, actually, knowing about the way you guys are thinking about it. Um, on the advanced stats, recessive genes, um, I'm kind of envisioning in my head those being an equalizer so that, uh, you know, it's somebody with three mythic drag or three mythic dread knights doesn't automatically win and the game's over. Is that a way we should be looking at it? Was that your intent at the time? Could you shed a little light on that again so that the people who are doing the research can um, understand what we're actually reading? I could speak to that a little bit. Um, so also just first, real briefly, just to to hit on that first part again like you look at traditional nfts that we've seen thus far uh like art pieces that are collectible that are basically just speculation um what we wanted to do at the onset of this project was create a new breed of like nfts that that actually have utility that can be used as investment vehicles uh in a very real way by using them rather than just holding them and speculating on price but um, about the uh, the other question, like equalizers and things, is there any one hero that's just going to always win everything? No. Uh, there will be, you know, like sort of like wheels and stuff that will show like someone has a strength against this. They might have a weakness against other types of things. There'll be certain like metas in those teams and things uh, and strategy can come into play as well. So uh, we will be sort of like monitoring things and having a like ranking system of sorts to sort of like match you up with people uh, of a similar rank. Uh, but I don't think there will ever like really be one that will just always win hands down all the time. There will always be little like nuances there. Probably Hubert can speak more to that than I can as well. Yeah, um, I, I guess what I'll, what I'll say, and I, I, I think maybe you're referring to like the skill genes um, when you're referring to like advanced genes and stuff as being equalizers. Uh, uh, but if I'm not thinking correctly, please let me no, know. No, that's it. That's 100% what I mean, right? Like, uh, would a sage with, I'm just picking, tr with transcendent skills have a chance against a um, dread knight, you know, with all basic skills? Is that the purpose of the of those skills in general, to be advanced transcendent elite? Uh, I, I would not necessarily say that you know if you have the transcendent skill it's just going to make it so you can win um but it uh you know we're we're planning with the skill system like there's the skills that you get from your genes and that is just a, a kind of extra set of skills that you can try to match and you know get the higher level versions that are going to be better um just to make a better hero uh, but each hero themselves are also going to have their own kind of skill tree and their own set of skills that you can pick between um so uh, it, it's gonna be kind of a a game of like figuring out what's the best combination and i i don't think we've ever had the intent that just those those genetic skills are going to be like the the one and only way to like kind of get the edge over like a higher rank class 
Um, I mean, we're going to have equipment, we have pets, there's, there's a lot of moving pieces involved. And so there's, you know, it could be a, a weapon that you have is going to give you the advantage or your armor is really good. Um, so there's, I, you know, it's, just just like an rpg and you know it, it is a game it has a lot of different pieces together I, I wouldn't say there is any one piece that's going to be the the complete solution uh, perfect you, uh... this is really helpful you guys can kick me off stage so other people can ask questions i'm sorry i took up so much time hey no worries we appreciate you trade and uh, at the end of the day they're good questions and this is this is the opportunity to ask them that's what we're looking for so we appreciate it we're going to do uh, Faulty Poker and one more, and then we're going to have to call it. Sorry, guys. I was just wondering, what will the minimum and maximum guild size be per plot of land? And also, will subclass have any effect on a pool of skills available to a hero? Thank you. Let's see. In the matter of guild size, I don't know that we've come to a solution yet or, or like a hard numbers, so I can't answer that at this time. <laughs> Well, so like we have kind of talked about adding multiples to it. So you might be able to have a larger guild if you own multiple plots of land. Um, but that still isn't something we've zeroed in all, all the way on yet. Right, yeah. So no, no hard numbers anyway. Um, and uh, as far as the, let's see, the second question was, could you repeat that again? Sorry, I kind of lost yeah, no problem. Uh, will subclass have any effect on the pool of skills available to a hero? Oh, okay. Yeah, right now, yes, we are planning on that. Um, we have I mean, we're in the process of of prototyping the combat system right now, and uh, you know it is a work in progress, and we are making changes. So it's difficult for me to say like hundred percent it's going to be this way or that way. Um, but we we are we do want to have subclass have an impact to combat and uh, skills is, is kind of the one way that we're looking at as being the solution to that. Um, but what that final form is going to look like, it's a little bit too early for me to say exactly. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. So we're going to finish out with metas. Hey guys. Uh, thank you for having me again. I have two very short questions, so I hope that it won't take too much of your time. The first one is relating to the balancing of combat and how you see that like in general. So to maybe phrase the question is that we see that in the current population, there's a group of people due to time or due to funds that are gathering high leveled or high stated heroes. And there's obviously new summons coming in and new players adopting the game. So how will combat be balanced between the entire range of people? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... That is something that we have to, I mean, we, we have to look at that very closely and we are doing that. Um, but, you know, in, in terms of like, if we're talking PVE versus PVP, uh, with, with something like PVP, we can do something where we kind of have like a, a team score that, you know, just based on what your team build is, it's level, their levels, what they are and everything, we can use that to do kind of matchmaking and make sure we're not, you know, having... Some some new player with very low level heroes going up against somebody with a whole bunch of dread knights or something like that. Um, but uh, with PVE, uh, it's a, you know that's a different a different problem that we have to solve for. And I think the the solution there is just to have you know easier quests and harder quests. And the harder ones will probably be very difficult for uh, weaker heroes to complete. Um, but you know the the easier ones they could they could most likely do as long as you set it up correctly so okay great that you guys are considering to balancing those things out and then maybe one final very short question is surrounding the current implementation of stat genes so we have the green stat gene we have the blue stat gene and if we met out like the stat growth of heroes over time we see that the green gene is almost negligible and that the blue stat bonus is less important than the subclass stat bonus and i was just wondering whether down the line, you have future uh, a different vision for those stat genes, or if they will always play a less important role in the stat growth of heroes. We'll just say that I do have plans for that to be a little bit of a player in the land tournaments. So if it's a stat-based thing for a specific stat, it would help to have the matching genes um, as well for that. Uh, but uh, you you are right though. As far as those two things, um, they're meant to be kind of smaller bonuses, and uh, 
you know, the, the green gene gives you kind of a little boost right at the start, and the, the blue one's more of like an overtime thing. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, we can still use those, the fact that you ha- the hero has that gene as a modifier towards anything that's like based on that stat as well. Um, and like I said, I do have plans to do that with the land tournaments. Awesome, that helps frame where they fit into the bigger picture. Thank you guys so much. Awesome, thank you as always, Metas. All right, so we are going to wrap up here. Uh, like we said at the beginning, got to keep this one shorter. Uh, still went a little over time. Sorry, everybody. So final thoughts. Nonlinear, you got anything to add before we call it? Uh, not not too much in the way of alpha or content, but overall, I'm, I'm really excited to keep pushing. We have a lot of really good stuff in the pipeline, a lot of major uh, features. Um, just with us hang in there and like you guys you guys are gonna love what's coming awesome hubert let's see just kind of echoing what penguin said i I am very excited for uh what we have coming in in the next month or you know in the the coming weeks there's there's a lot that we have uh that's getting very close to being ready um so I'm, i'm excited to see those launch and to see everyone interacting with everything that's coming um and you know, I even though sometimes we have updates that are a little bit light, it's just you know the the time with development. It does uh, it. There's there's a lot of moving parts that we need to work on, and sometimes we will have updates that are a little bit smaller, but that just gives us more time to get the features where they need to be. And I I'm really excited for what's coming. Me too, <laughs> dreamer. Um, yeah, I think just to maybe tie a few things together today from the opening and the some of the questions, you know, I really like how Hubert introed the perilous journey. And, you know, the, to one of the other questions, you know, are we thoughtful about the the economy part of the game? This is a play to earn game. We are building out more and more of a game um, as we add features that aren't just like gamified financial platform and NFT marketplace. And we're very excited about that, but there's also a lot of value linked to all of this. You know, Perilous Journey is going to be really, really important to follow and to understand, you know, with the the, the first opportunity of, of a hint to burning. Um, I get a lot of messages in my DMs like, hey, look at how many heroes are out there, you know, worried about saturation or certain classes or certain professions, price going up or down. And I think we're all focused on that. I hope that everybody appreciates we don't quickly react to short-term changes. We don't want to manipulate or control overall prices, and we don't want to be overly disruptive. But we do want to find fun ways to to make sure this is a, a healthy, ongoing kind of ecosystem. So please stay tuned to Perilous Journey. Um, I think what we thought of not only is needed from like a um, an economical perspective and angle, but also – going from one realm to the other and bridging the gap there and everything that we have planned for for crystal veil um there's a lot of thought going into this not only to make it beautiful not only make it fun not only to preserve all of our assets and actually have it be you know an interesting opportunity for somebody to consider you know an investment but uh, we want to innovate the space. So thank you for the good questions. Thank you for the hard questions. And again, I apologize if there are good comments and questions sitting in any of our DMs that we haven't got back to, but really appreciate the words said today and excited for um, you know, DFK Day tomorrow. For sure. Tomorrow's going to be amazing. If you're able to be here, we're so excited to meet you. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, and, and Dreamer was saying, is the Perilous Journey information is going to be available for everybody. So yes, it's coming tomorrow in person, but it will be provided to everybody. So don't worry about that. Fox, you want to close us out? Yes, gladly. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, heroes, we've got we started with 2,000 heroes. We've got, I think, close to 130,000, probably more actually uh, now. Um, and really, it's just a question of supply versus demand. Like, we want to be a game that's played by like hundreds of thousands of people, you know, and, and so that will grow and that will be needed to grow. And that's fine as well. It's all about balancing. And that's what the market is really good for. Like, the market is very efficient and it will balance things. You'll see the floor price go up and down as those things come into play. 
our job is to create a ecosystem where heroes have utility and have ROI that is positive and uh, have it be a enjoyable experience for all the people. And that's what we're hard at work at every day, all day. And we're excited to be here creating these things. And uh, it's really amazing to see how far we've come. And I'm super excited about the stuff that's ahead. We are, from the very start, we have done things that no one else has done. And it's really, like, blown away a lot of people. And we aren't stopping. Like, we're going to continue to do things that no one else is doing. So stay tuned. We have some pretty cool announcements uh, coming up. Uh, Really excited to see what's ahead. So, yeah, also... uh, I always say it, but you guys are the best community ever. And I love, love interactions with all of you. And I'm excited to meet some of you uh, tomorrow, hopefully. So, yeah, uh, thank you to everyone. And uh, thanks for coming. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you, Dreamer, Hubert, Penguin, Fox, for being here. Thank you, everybody that's here in the audience for joining us and submitting questions and asking them live. Come see us tomorrow if you can. If you have questions for next week's AMA, the form for that will be going live uh, momentarily. And next week, we are going to be having an AMA with the BizDev team. So get some questions ready for us. And thank you all for being here. You guys are great. We'll see you next week or tomorrow. Yeah, bullish. Bullish. It's bullish. Bullish.